Okay, okay. guys. Thank you. you just very much. Yannick came in, sat down, and started laughing to himself and walked <laughs> 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 Oh, God. Well done. Is that true? Yeah, he did. Is yeah, yeah. Really? He came in and sat down. <laughs> well, first of all, Sam, we're live on Sky Sports News HQ. Um, when you've taken on this job now, why did you perform effectively a U-turn? Because it seemed that you had ruled yourself out of it. Um, it was a very quick phone call when I was in Dubai about... It's it's um, ready to roll, and uh, I've, I, from my point of view, I, I expected it to be a little bit quicker, and uh, and and it wasn't. So, but then of course it, the call came, and then within 48 hours, I was here, and um, e Everton was always going to be a temptation to come back out of retirement and and take up the challenge, of course. Um, and I think that uh, uh, I'd have been offered a number of jobs uh, between uh, retiring from Crystal Palace and sort of uh, almost officially saying I'd retired for the first time. I always before I'd sort of said, you never know what, what might happen. So I got offered more jobs when I said I'd retired than I've ever been offered in my life. So, and finally, uh, Everton came along um, and I, like I said, it, in the end, it was done within 48 hours, even with me being in Dubai. And um, after enjoying the uh, uh, the Grand Prix at Abu Dhabi, which was outstanding, uh, the phone call came from Everton, which gave a great end to that holiday, like you mean, and flew back and came straight from the airport straight to watch the team perform an outstanding performance on Wednesday night against West Ham. and. Uh, you know, and, and the contract finally got finished with its little bit of clauses that have to be written in the right manner, as we all know, through lawyers, and uh, and, and it's done and dusted. So I'm delighted that uh, I've uh, come back into uh, a club of this magnitude, size, and uh, the history of the football club. It seems then that you're ready to come back into football. You felt the need to come back into football, but why was Everton so tempting? It was Everton. Set, it set the, the word, the name of the club says it all itself. It's, it's, you know, I'm big mates with Reedy and uh, Andy Gray and Paul Bracewell, like you mean, and you know, they eulogise about this football club when they had spent their time there, you know what I mean? Big Dunk, who's and the coaching staff here talks about this club with great affection, like you mean. So, so you know, it was extremely difficult for me to move on last time, but I couldn't say no when they came came back I had to uh, well didn't really have a tough decision to make then once once they finally said let's see where we go and that was it it was done so you've got friendships at stake then because if you've got to get it right haven't you with those yeah. <laughs> well I mean it's in a difficult place at the moment which nobody expected um, and because nobody expected that it's probably you know why they come and ask me to to take over the reins to bring a bit of stability to the club but this time I wanted to be much more than that really because uh, I want to see the club grow and I want to see live along with the ambition that it's had recently it finished seventh last season it got into Europe and everybody expected that it would be a good season this season and uh, they, they might be able to move on or certainly get in the round where they finished last year. That hasn't happened and uh, for whatever reason, um, it's my job to steer them back in the right direction and then try to get them back in amongst the European places and FA Cup final or... or I don't know what the other Cup final's called now. What is it called? <laughs> Carabao. Car Car Carabao Cup final. Um, so... The first and foremost thing is to get the team back to winning ways, to bring some stability to the club, to get them playing as good as they played on Wednesday night consistently. Hopefully that will happen tomorrow. It'll tell me an awful lot if we can hit that level of performance again, uh, which tells me we're moving in the direction, or there'll be a falter in the performance and the result doesn't go quite our way. It will tell me an awful lot about the players that we have at this moment in time, but certainly I was so impressed on Wednesday night to come back from the two previous results and, and win like they did was shows they've got an outstanding character in amongst them. 
So do you view this as a longer term project for yourself than the, an 18 month contract that you've signed? Yeah, because contracts don't mean anything do they much today apart from you, you, you need to sign a contract, you need to have a contract of written down in terms of negotiation, but if you do well, that contract gets extended. If you don't do so well, you get sacked. And that's what we have to face today. I think average life of a Premier League manager is probably about 1.2 years, you know, 14 months or so on and so forth. So, you know, if, you, if you're going forward and the club's going in the right direction and, and the ambition, you can deliver the ambition the football club has, and this football club has a lot of ambition, certainly from the owners all the way down. We all know the fans are... Are, are, are ambition they always have been um, so if we get the right recruitment and we can galvanise the players that are already here and the most important thing here at the moment is keep the players fit because nine of them are injured and those nine players are affecting the possibility of you picking a team to to uh, deliver a performance and give consistent results so those nine injuries coupled with the fixtures in Europe and the fixtures in the Premier League have been a massive problem to the level of performance and results. So that's what I have to resolve. I have to resolve all those problems and particularly the injured players getting fit and staying fit because even though Europe will finish next week, we're going to <coughs> 10 games in, in December because of the Christmas period. So uh, getting those players fit will be a crucial part of... Uh, our success. Have you got thoughts already then on who you need to bring in in January? Not particularly, not yet. No, I mean, I've only been here 48 hours. So, <laughs> uh, But there will be plenty of, of uh, information um, in, in recruitment terms through through the club. They've got a very, very good recruitment system and uh, and, and cover a huge amount of, of games and a huge amount of knowledge on players that we'll, we will tap into. Um, but the first and foremost things are the players here at the moment. And uh, and obviously, the players who are fit, getting the best out of them, we possibly can. And and then, uh, just as important, how quick can we get the players who are injured back into the squad? Have you spoken to Ross Barkley then as well? And are you able? Do you feel that you are able to persuade him that his future long term lies with Everton? I haven't spoken to Ross yet because he is injured, and uh, I have to focus on on Saturday's game. And that focus is to. Uh, put all my attention on the on the players that are available to play tomorrow. Down the line, all the players who are who are here will ha will sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one with me, and and I will find out where people lie in terms of their position at the club on 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 the way forward, how they see it, what, how I see it, and and at the end of all that, I'll have a much better picture too talk to the to the owners and the board about about how I see what the squad and where it is at the moment and who who is or who isn't quite as happy as I might have thought they were. From the information that you've had though as an outsider looking in up until now, would you say that Ross is someone that this club should be looking to keep hold of long term? I mean well, obviously I they have they've tried. tried they've tried, haven't they? They have tried. Well, well they've tried and they've tried and it, 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 there's only so far a football club can go and, it, and it's, I don't know exact details I'm not privy to those details, um, but I think the most important thing for me and for us is not to worry about the contract, it's to worry about getting fit and performing to what, whatever level he performed to before, because um, if he stays here, that'd be great. Uh, if he goes somewhere else, he's going to need you know, to hit the sort of level he got to, to perhaps get the contract that he's looking for. Given you saw the game the other night as well, where does Wayne Rooney fit into your plans? After he gave such a stark reminder of what he can produce, well, there's no problem with him playing deep anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> he's put that one to bed. Is, hasn't is he? that is that the role so you see you for him? You mean, so well, where would you see after Wednesday night? <laughs> uh, well, I play. You don't need to be a yeah. rocket scientist here <laughs> or a manager to know where he's going to be playing. I mean, my God, that was an outstanding performance, and uh, you know, Wayne set his set his standard again, hasn't he? He's got to try and live to that standard again. Like, I mean, did. did Delivering those performances, or that, or that performance of the night was almost like the old Wayne Rooney at Manchester United. Like I mean, completely controlled the game, and his outstanding quality, um, and and the way he drifted into the box for his second goal, and the way he took his third goal. Um, I suppose he was a little bit lucky on the first because the penalty came off 
of uh, of heart, and uh, he managed to put that in. But you know, it, it was a performance we needed to to um, stop the stop the run we were in, and uh, and that performance uh, got us a victory. And there was many outstanding performances, and 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 more importantly for me, and this is n this is. Uh, Nothing to do with the, the negativity of football, as people might say, but it's the only the second clean sheet we've achieved, and and everybody knows that the defensive solidarity of any team um, defines the success of a football club. Do you have to win over the fans here, Sam? Everybody has to win over the fans. So if you lose, the fans criticise. If you win, the fans are okay with you. So whatever perception the fans have about me. There's nothing I can do about that. It's been over many, many years now, and it, you know, it's n not true, of course, because we play a game of football to try and win it. And uh, with the players that we have available, my job is to allow the players to the play to their best and their strengths. And uh, and that has always been the case wherever I've been. So I have never played the same way at any football club I've managed. And I've managed seven in this Premier League now, which is more than anybody else. And each each club has had a different philosophy on how you should play, a different way that you should play. And all I've tried to do is try to live to that that philosophy that they have at the moment. And uh, and luckily enough for me, uh, wherever I've been, uh, I've managed to leave the club in a far better position than when I've taken over. Like you mean so. Who knows how far we can take Everton? Only time will tell. In terms of that brand of football, then what can they em envisage from it? A winning brand, hopefully, but that will determine on the players producing their best performances within within the context of the the team that we're playing. Like you know, so we we, we can't play the same way against some teams or with the same ways others. So we can't play the same way every game. Um, that would be naive. Um, so we set out to look at the opposition's weaknesses, see how we can expose those and, uh, and make, make sure that we nullify their strengths. And if we do that in the right manner, and make fewer mistakes than the opposition, we have a chance of winning. In terms of this deal getting done for you, what input has there been from Farhad Mashiri, Bill Canrant? Fantastic. I mean, it, you know, it's a massive decision for an owner to make and, and, and appoint a new manager. Particularly, I think when he didn't expect it, I don't think he expected that they would be sitting in the position of, of of letting Ronald Koeman go after what he did last season, and all of a sudden they had to find this solution. They felt it was necess a necessity, and now who's who's in the who's in the market as a new manager, and uh, and I think that that again is a huge decision to to find a new manager and to get the right one and hopefully I am the right one for Everton time will tell Steve Walsh you already know here as well is yeah. that a big help for you? It's massive because I mean I get better by the players that we bring in from now on um, so if a new player arrives at Everton Football Club I have to make sure with Steve's help and everybody's help and the board's help that he's better than the one that he's replacing and um, the art of the uh, Building a successful side is choosing those players to play for Everton Football Club now to make sure that they're the right players for for us. And um, the track record for me is, in recruitment terms, I think has always been one of my strengths. You know, the recruitment at, at, at Crystal Palace last January was why we ended up beating Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal. Um, so, if we didn't beat those boys, we'd have got relegated. Um, we we battered all City when we needed to four 0 at home to make sure we stayed in the Premier League, and that became by the new players that were recruited in January making the team so much better. And so that's what our job is, or my job is, with with, with the recruitment department to find this player, find that player, and I have to say, it is the hardest job now in the game. This job is hard where I'm sat, but that's just as hard, if not harder now, because one, there's not enough of them, and two, the prices are, 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 are very expensive indeed. And Sammy Lee joining you again, just over a week away from the, the Merseyside man, yeah. derby. Yeah, the wee man, nothing wrong with that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm delighted that he's, uh, 
he's come with me and uh, we've we've got a great working relationship which I felt is very important because I can't do it all on my own and uh, along with uh, two or three others who will follow um, I think that uh, we're close to obviously Ryland, uh, Ryland Morgan who's a uh, performance analysis man who, who I think everybody knows now um, it gives us another edge on the on the physical and, and tactical and education side in terms of uh, developing players from that side of it and, and understand the times of training, nutrition, values and rest and sleep deprivation, all those sort of things that he's, he, he just sl slides in nice and nice and easy along with all the coaching technology we do now today and all the analysis. So that with the coaching network at, uh, that hopefully will be finished off by the end of next week will uh, give me the good basis to try and move forward as quickly as possible along with the staff who are already here integrate them and see where, where and what they're doing in their positions and and making sure that they're delivering to the players everything that they can possibly deliver because that helps the player to become better and perform better on a week to week basis and becomes more consistent Mr Jack then Craig Shakespeare joining you as, as well Craig you? hopefully um, by the end of today with a bit of luck but and Duncan stays obviously Duncan, Duncan stays yes and you're taking over a club that is in a better position than when Ronald Koeman left of course as well so it gives you a platform I suppose to build yes it does it's, it's, it's obviously for me uh, quite unusual that we've got more points and games like you mean normally when I come in there's a, there's a lot less points and games like mm -hmm. you mean and we, we have to make that up so that's how crucial the win was um, and of course I spoke to the players only briefly, and I'm taking nothing away from David because they did a fantastic job. But, but it, you know, it was really all about two things: it was one, clean, keeping a clean sheet, and two, scoring the first goal. And and what that brought to the team, a little iffy spell for 25 minutes in the second half. But just though, just putting those two things in place give you the platform to to climb up the table pretty quickly. Obviously, finally for me as well, it's a strange coincidence of the World Cup draw today. So, how do you feel now that you are sat here as the Everton manager? I'm delighted. I'm the Everton manager. And what went on in the past is uh, in the Atlantic Ocean now, which is called Water Under the Bridge. Did you get that one? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, it's uh, it's long gone. Uh, obviously, it'll it'll always be there in the in the back of the mind. But uh, you know, wasn't my decision. I'm bound to say it's the wrong one. I think it's probably been proven that it was the wrong one, but life goes on. I'm just delighted to be here. Just a couple of quick ones, Sam, because I think we kick off soon after that. Yes. Um, your goalkeeping coach as well, um, we, we stick with one of your former players here? Or? I don't know yet. Um, I'm just uh, still still mulling over that, that decision on, on where, where we lie at the moment. Alan Kelly's here at the minute, so I used to play with Alan Kelly years ago of course so <clears throat> but we'll see how it works and see how everybody works and I'm not sure everybody will stay some might leave on on the fact that as as time goes on they will all have a chance to work with me and there may be that we don't see eye to eye or we don't work in the right manner or the what I consider so there might be people that, that leave and new people come in but at the moment just these three or four to start with and hopefully everybody else falls in line. And as far as Huddersfield is concerned, how much of an impact can you have on the game with, with such a short space of time? No, uh, Well, I, I mean, only the fact that you, you, you're you asking the players to repeat the same and similar performances to the level they did on Wednesday night and uh, and do and do very much the same things. Like I mean, there's lots of things said about the players. Um, but for me... The outstanding performance was the back four and the goalkeeper keeping a clean sheet. They got good protection from the rest of the players, which helped an awful lot. So that was very, very important. But West Ham's front line uh, and attacking force is, is their strength. And uh, for the team having conceded five and four, to to sh limit those limit West Ham team to zero shots at goal or certainly zero shots on target in the in the first half and I think two shots on target in the second half just shows how good a defensive unit we were 
and of course that gave us the basis to turn some pretty good football on you know our attacking play then from that basis became more fluent I think and apart from that 20 minute spell just after half time and what pleased me was how the lads they got a bit nervous but they dug in and didn't allow the opposition to score and I think that's been a speaking to David before I got here that's been the problem the problem has always been when the opposition have scored and seems to have, the team seems to have caved in and, and, and lost more and more goals instead of staying galvanised and, and playing their way back in the team so that level of performance on Wednesday is, is the minimum I expect to, for the team on, on, on tomorrow um, fatigue may be a factor because it's such a short period of recovery time and, and looking at the load these players have had over the last few months starting right the way back to Euro qualifiers and all the way through here the, the, every, every month has been like Christmas to them so substitutes might be a big play tomorrow to if we see anybody sort of tiring or whatever it might be to put the substitutes on and give us a bit of fresh legs more finally, if I may, and with that in mind, I'm, I'm guessing you probably won't want to make many changes. But do you know who you have got available that maybe wasn't available on Wednesday? Uh, so uh, Niasi and Keane are yeah. available. Keen's okay, yeah. Right? yeah, so the two the two lads are fine. Glad to have right. them back in the squad, especially from Mike Cousin's point of view, because defensively, we we only had those four players on on Wednesday night who were who were defenders at, in the in the first team squad. No. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, Sam. Thank you.